Hey everyone, Neo once again here from The Overclocker. Last week, I took a quick look at the ASUS Prime GeForce RTX 5080. Due to some time constraints and some adventures with some drivers, I didn't get a chance to cover everything I wanted to. After being asked several times about overclocking, I finally put together some tests and benchmarks to show how GPU Tweak 3 at least affects performance on the ASUS Prime card. Before we dive into the numbers however, I've noticed a few key differences in overclocking behavior compared to the previous RTX 40 series of cards. The biggest one for me is how well this card recovers or better yet prevents overclocks that would otherwise crash your system or application. For instance, on the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4080, you can push an overclock in GPU tweak that can crash the driver or even cause a full system lockup. Whether it's through the GPU core or memory overclock, this process can be time consuming as you'll have to deal with multiple restarts while finding a stable setting for your system. That's not the case with the RTX 5080. For one, the maximum GDDR7 clock seems to be internally limited, likely by some logic within the GPU or driver. No matter what you set in the software, 36 gigabits per second is the highest it will go. That's 6 gigabits per second more than stock, but keep in mind that this card actually uses 32 gigabits per second memory, even though it runs at 30 gigabits per second by default. So effectively, you're looking at about a 12.5% boost over the DRAM IC's rated speed. Secondly, when it comes to the GPU clocks, I found that it's best to avoid voltage tuning altogether. Because as soon as you adjust it, the GPU seems to downclock to around 1350MHz, which appears to be a built-in protection mechanism. Instead, I only adjusted the power draw slider, which allowed for an 11% increase in power over the stock TBP. On top of that, I was able to add around 390MHz to the GPU clock which depending on the application resulted in frequencies as high as 3.275 GHz, though most of the time it settled around 3125 MHz. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into the numbers. So, the test system remains unchanged. So that's a Ryzen 9 CPU cooled by the ROG Ryujin 3 360ARGB Extreme AIO, the ASUS ROG Strix B850F Gaming Motherboard, Corsair's Vengeance RGB DDR5 Memory, and the XPG Fusion 1600W ATX 3.0 PSU. Starting with power draw, the overclocked RTX 5080 consumes 18% more power, peaking at 400 watts, up from the 360 watts under stock conditions. That's actually more than the ROG Strix RTX 4080, but keep in mind that the Strix card has a higher power limit by default. Temperature-wise, the Prime card runs surprisingly cool, even when overclocked, it only reaches 73 degrees despite having a smaller, less elaborate cooler and drawing more power. ASUS has done a solid and incredible job with cooling on this model. We then get to the synthetic tests. In Geekbench AI, the overclocked ASUS Prime card delivers an 8% performance boost. Then in V-Ray, the GPU benchmark at least, we see an even bigger 18% gain, the only test where the performance increase matches the power draw increase. Moving on to 3D Mark, both Steel Nomad and Speedway show a 12% performance improvement. Meanwhile, Time Spy Extreme sees a 9.6% gain, which isn't surprising since this test is CPU bound. In the Unigen Superposition, which remains heavily GPU dependent, the overclocked RTX 5080 sees a 13% increase in performance, in line with what 3D Mark suggested. And then finally, we get to the gaming benchmarks, starting off with Hitman World of Assassination. The overclock boosts performance by 10%, making 4K at max settings nearly possible without needing DLSS, at least when looking at the average frame rates. We then move on to Cyberpunk 2077 with the latest patch. The overclock here brings a 10% boost in performance, similar to what we saw in Hitman. However, at 4K at max settings, that still remains unplayable. This is where frame generation or DLSS quality instead of the DLAA that I used becomes more essential. We then get to Red Dead Redemption 2. With the maxed out settings, the overclock delivers a 12.6% performance increase. And at 4K, it becomes playable without DLSS if, for some reason, that's how you prefer to play. Compared to the reference RTX 4080 at 4K, the overclocked 5080 is a massive 57% faster, which is just quite astonishing, actually. We then move on to a newer title in F1 2024. With all settings maxed out and DLSS set to DLAA rather, the overclocked ASUS card is 13% faster overall, with the biggest gains at 1080p. At stock clocks, the RTX 5080 makes the game playable at 4K. Finally, we get to Marvel's Spider-Man 2. I'm really not sure what's going on with this title, as it had some issues at launch. 
However, using the latest patch and the latest driver, we see on average that the overclock nets you a 9% boost. So finally, looking at all six games tested across all resolutions, the average performance gain from the overclock is about 10% or 9.9% to be exact. However, power draw is also up by 18%, meaning the GPU has moved out of its optimal power to performance efficiency window, which is expected with any overclocking to be honest, as this happens with GPUs and CPUs for the most part. Still, if you're willing to trade power efficiency for extra performance, the ASUS Prime RTX 5080 holds up really well under overclocking. It runs cool, has strong power delivery, and most importantly, prevents unstable overclocks from crashing your system. And well, that's it for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And until the next time, take care of yourselves, guys, and peace.